So welcome back. Uh, I'm here on my desktop, as you can see, nothing too weird. Uh, but basically, this is Icewind Amateur. It's what I'm going to be talking about, and the video topic is going to be, you know, why is Icewind Amateur, and you know, uh, how I have configured, why, how did I do my configuration, how did I get to look like this and act like this, and you know. So on. So as you can see already, we have our menu icon, we have our workspace icons, we have our name space, and if you open up Windows, uh, we can see it on um, it shows those up there. We have a network icon or a graph. We have a memory graph. We have a CPU graph with temperature showing as well, and a clock with a date on it. So, what's the point of all this? You know. Why do I use Ice Window Matcher? You know, there's open books out there, there's flex books out there. Why would I use Ice Window Matcher when I have those as an option? And the reason is very simple. It feels to me more complete, more polished, more functional, and it fits my needs better. For instance, open books doesn't have a bar, it doesn't have, you know, one of these. And that's a bad thing. Uh, for me, because I want a bar, and I prefer these in window matter bars because they are lighter, or they tend to be lighter, they tend to be more integrated, so you know, you don't end up with weird issues with your system like you might on a third party bar, and you know, it's just made to work with the desktop, and that's good. And it also means you configure it in together with your rest of your window matter, and that's important because it means my configurations are, you know, kept together, it, it's all kind of just there, it's all just kind of part of the same window matters, part of the same desktop, and that's what I want. And also, there are options like Fluxbox with, with just a bar, but that bar, in my experience, is chunky, and also, I didn't really like the overall feeling of Fluxbox, it feels um, unnatural to me, it doesn't feel like it puts a workflow too well, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have the ease of, config ease of configuration that Ice Window Matcher does. And the bar here is very nice, you know. It has functions for background, it has, you know, everything I might need. And uh, therefore, I'm going to go over this. I'm going to show you uh, what how I did my configuration, what it looks like, you know, what I can do with it, and uh, so on. I have all of my configuration uh, in GitHub, I will be linking it down below, so that's that, uh, you can go with those links if you want to. But yeah, let me, let me go through this and show what this all looks like. So now we have AppMenu, as I mentioned, you know, I uh, have my uh, apps here in a kind of pasted menu. And I have my settings for preferences, if you want to change something temporarily. I have my themes here. I have my logout, which you know, speed logout, restart window matcher, and you know, shut down, reboot, blah blah. The restart ice window matcher is very useful if I want to you know, uh, change the configuration and not how to shut down any apps or anything. Such a very good tool. We have our workspace things here, so now we go with the workspaces. I have the space here, which as I mentioned, brings some apps. I have, we have our things here. Also, if I want to open up like a network uh, thing in terminal, I can by double clicking that. If I want to open a page stop, I can double click on the C CPU one and it will bring a page stop. Uh, then we can look into the clock. We have a clock here. And yeah, so we can open up some terminals. And you can see this open up. But we can, uh, you know, go with Super F2. We can kind of open up them in a Tile layout like this, but we can also do another tile layout like this by uh, well, super F3. If you want to close, I can do super and delete, and then I can do super and F10 and it will uh, maximize it. I can do that again to minimize it. Then I can uh, do that as well, and I can do this uh, and this. So now we have two windows. I can do super and control and super and K or super and J to go between them. And I can also move mouse and it will automatically follow that and uh, stuff like that. I know if I want to maximize something vertically, I can with uh, super shift and F10. Then I can also do super control F10 and it will do it vertically or horizontally, sorry. So if I uh, close this one and go this, you can see it's actually uh, horizontally maximized. I can go back into this and do it go back in vertically and then I can just do super and F10 and do it 
That was Super F11, which is this, and I can do Super F10 and do this. So, yeah, that's how that works. Very simple. I can modify my windows a lot, and I can make it much smaller again. I can move it by doing like uh, Super in S, Super in X, Super in W, Super in E, Super in Q, Super in A, Super in D, Super in C, and Super in C. So I can move it around as well, like this, and once again, I can make it vertically super so if you want to do this and then i can just do that i can do it like this and i can also have a menu with the keyboard and i can just with the uh, super desk and then i can move the mouse keys and it's gonna go around like this uh so yeah it's very it's a very good workflow it works with both a keyboard and a mouse and that's a great thing about it so now i can now go actually into my system file tools, how much your PC man FM, okay now I think it's clicked, but yeah, that's that. I'm going to do the window manager, I can look into my uh, preferences file here. And full screen this thing. And we can see we have our file, and as you can see here, it looks like this. So now you have these options. In a, in a comment it says what something does, and under it it will give the actual option, and then you should check like 0 or 1, or sometimes you might have to type in a font, or you might want to type in, you know, a color, and so on. So it will, you know, give you these options here for doing things. It's a very simple layout, as you can see, it, it's, you know, very simple. Uh, it just takes the value of something to whatever it needs to be, very simplistic and very functional. Then you can, you know, check out like your startup, this is like your startup application. So, you know, I have uh, uh, my key mappings being set and my screen banking, up, screen going to sleep setting up here. Then, you know, you can look into something like your menu. So I have removed a bunch of things from here, actually. It has like, you know, shortcuts for eternal above this stuff. I have disabled that stuff, so yeah. Then you can you know, look in focus mode thing. What this does is it selects, uh, it sets your mouse focus mode. So you know, here we have set two or sloppy, which is basically what does this, which asks to select our focus by mouse movement alone. Uh, so that's what that does. Then we can also look at our themes. So here's Dark Guys, which is our theme name. Then uh, you can look into this uh, default theme in the VS Code, and you can see here uh, we can also have this option set. So what this does is it actually also set a bunch of things from preferences in a theme file, and these are stuff to do with appearance and you know how things look. Uh, so now we have these things set up and you know made them look like we wanted to look. So that's that. And then we also have all of these XPM files. These are, you know, icons. So, for example, we have the close icons here. So, you know, it's this one here. So, you know, if I click on it, it becomes black because, well, the icon under here is uh, black uh, in color. And it shows up like that. And uh, that's basically what it does. The top one is what we have on our uh, active one. And the bottom one is what we have when we have to click it. So now the top one is where you don't click it, and then the bottom one is where you have clicked it. So it's going to give it some feedback. Then we have our taskbar icons here, so now we have our menu icon here, here. This menu button icon on this one. We also, we also have some other icons for buttons I don't have enabled in my config at the moment. And, you know, things kind of look like this. So, yeah, it's a very simple configuration, just, you know, changing those individual names of things. Very easy to do. I have made my own theme. I have made my own preference file to kind of change the colors of things, multi-bar the top, make it light, and you know, so on. I will once again link everything down below so you can just go over that stuff and uh, make things look the same as mine. Now we can go back and change our theme. So now if we go to our themes here and make default, it looks like this. Our wallpaper is overridden by the theme here. Uh, but why does it do that? So it will be fine once it's turned back. As you can see, we have this uh, Ice Window Matter uh, menu here. It works the same way, but it looks different. The colors are, well, uh, much lighter. I don't like this look. It's not a very good look, in my opinion. Then we have all of these, uh, you know, icons. Again, the bar is very thick. It's very, you know, massive. 
this uh, great background here is part because I uh be part because I think I still have preferences. But in any case, this stuff doesn't fit in. You know, it's just black background, the clock and stuff. So you get the idea. It doesn't really look natural. Now we can go back into opening up our file manager. So on PC.fm, we can go back here. We can go and then rename our preference file into something else. So now it wants like add a dot before it. Then we can restart as we don't And if we go back to default configuration. So here we can see the is a battery icon, I don't have a battery, so it doesn't do anything. We have like a mail icon, I don't do anything with that. Once like, again, I don't have a mail client. We have this clock like this. Once well, again, looking a bit ugly in my opinion. We have this, uh, once well, again, with black background, you know, not really looking nice. We have the menu here like this. You also have to click things uh, manually by default and stuff like that. So, you know, there's all to configure. It's fairly easy to configure though, you know, you can just change the line values, you can, you know, just make everything like 1, 0, so on. So now we just make our theme again, back into how we want it to be, and it looks right back into how it does, after we renamed our preferences. So yeah, we have this nice dark theme I made, and uh, it just follows the overall color scheme I want, I do have an alt tab menu as well, so I want to alt tab between these I can, of course I have some shortcuts. So no, we can do this in any way you want. Uh, very simple. We have icons that work and you know. It's all very easy, easy and nice to customize. It all works the way you want and the way I want really. If you're interested in this, you can look it up. And uh, I link everything right below. Uh, it probably is in a repost, but as I said, make sure you get at least 2.3.0. Uh, because the verse before it have a bug with the system tray. So make sure that you're again 2.3.0 or anything newer than that. So that has the issue fixed. So yeah, that's for that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you like my configs. Let me know if you like this uh, discussion. Uh, and if you have any ideas for what I could do with this video matter or any other one as well. And I'll be seeing you around afterward.